guys, look. Welcome to the vintages. You stay in one of those. Airstreams. The Airstreams, these are nice. I know we're not staying in an Airstream, we're staying in a, another one. The Vintages is an RV park dedicated to classic mobile homes. I love ours. Mm -hmm. They have bikes. Mm -hmm. This RV is insane. It's a street of vintage RVs where time seems to jump back more than half a century. Wow. Old fashioned. Wow, Mom. We'd chosen the 1954 Anderson 315 TB. The company's original tagline was at home on the road. <gasps> There's oh. an oven. Is there a place to cook? What's under there? This. Yeah, what's under there? In the 40s and 50s, this was top of the line tiny housing. Look, look, you can close the door. You can have a whole personal bathroom. Look, close the door. See? Private bathroom. Cool, right? And then it's a bathroom. Then you open it, and now it's a hallway. I didn't notice until later that the website says our trailer is meant for two adults and two children, maximum. No. It's a sofa bed. Sofa bed? I'm not sure what kind of sofa bed it is. Ah, you pull it out, it's not going to be very big. Lots of time. It's not easy to describe the attraction of vintage trailers, or even better, a park full of them. But life here seems strangely attuned to advice we get for slowing down. Are you ready? Yeah. Wow. We feel safe here for the kids to be riding their bikes around and that's unusual because we're from Portland so to get that is nice. We have family that grew up in the valley so we really love it here and when we discovered this place it just kind of fit in with our whole lifestyle. We just love traveling and it's really cute and quaint. My husband actually slept here so he and he's a big man and he fit so there's here. We have another child hidden over in the corner. <laughs> Did you sleep here? No. No. We no. all three slept on that bed. Oh, that's great. The kids will complain at home about not having enough space, but then this sort of thing where you would really think they'd complain, they're totally fine with it. So I think it's kind of like playing fort for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I don't even think my husband really fits in here. It's pretty small. And then there's a shower, which is convenient. Oh my god, did you use it? Nope. <laughs> We've used the toilet and that's it. I went down to the clubhouse and showered, so. It's fun and it's kind of unplugging a little bit as well, for sure. There is that nostalgic part of it, even yeah. though that we can't really dip down and find what roots those are. I was growing up in New Orleans, Tell there was a Mardi Gras gathering of Airstream trailers every year. People came from all over the country in their Airstream, so as a kid, I kind of got fascinated with them. It is somewhat of an estate of disarray. This was our version of trying to get the Airstream experience without having to actually pull one. Do you like it, baby? So, which we do one day. 
Petra, tell her what you said last night about fitting in this. What movie was it like? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Cause yeah. My mom and dad slept right here, okay. and I had to sleep at the end of the bed. And we were acting like the grandparents in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then this bed pulled out for her, and no. it was just like a little miniature little... Um, and we where did you sleep? I slept right here in my own bed. Right, these two little brackets undo to, to push it or raise it back up. I'm down. The table is described as a, I think, a convertible bed. It's more of a convertible table. And then the cushions pull out and fold down in the back to kind of level things out. So you pretty much need to be about three feet tall to, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. There may be some other aspect to this that we don't understand, but that, unfortunately there was no actual instructions with this. They just kind of said push the table right. down. And then Petra, you want to show them the little bathroom? Yes. So this was the cute bathroom that we had. And, um... has a shower. Um, we didn't really take showers in here because we used a public one. It has a cool mirror and sink. And what was the name of this one, Petra? What is the name of this airstream? The Bambi. The Bambi. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty yeah. nice. So, and this was the sink. And now. then you take your finger in then. It's hard. Yeah. And then this was all the plate. And then that's the silverware. Oh, my gosh. It's like a kid's dollhouse. Mm -hmm. And I called it as a little sleepaway playhouse. Would you want to live in something like this? Yes, I would. Because when I'm older, I want to have a car and I want to pull it around and just explore the world. Kind of look at airstreams online and people that had refurbished them and I always thought about wow it'd be really great to stay in one of those obviously this is a little bit different than some of the more traditional silver ones and we like living in small spaces and kind of cozy environments so this is this is perfect and in this one we've got obviously a smaller bed but you know i'm six two and it i can sleep on it just fine and then just the bathroom it's pretty Oh yeah, do you fit in there or I mean, like this is, squeeze This is it? definitely like an airplane setting, right? Where, so you, everybody's sitting if they're using the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really fit too, too. I mean, it's okay, right? It's okay. Wow, that's tight. Yeah, yeah. So you've got your little kitchenette, mm -hmm. which is great with running water and um, wine in the fridge, of course. That's small, but efficient. Is that a freezer on top? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got everything. <laughs> Ice cream for later, all the good stuff. I'm a, I gotta bend a little bit, but I mean, this is actually roomier than I thought it would be. Yeah. It's awesome, I mean, I love the wood. Like, you know, it's just, um, you definitely feel like you're kind of going back in time or you're in a different place. Mom? Yeah. Mom, can we get something at the general store? I think I look. I don't think there's much stuff there, though. Yeah, yeah there's, and there's candy. The... And there's, Mom, there's a um, chocolate bar. It's just so cute and retro and it was we like the idea of the bikes. It's yeah. a little bit like magical. It's definitely like stepping back. Definitely. In time. Right now it's kind of like a nice distraction to like come out here from yeah. our city and just like kind of you know yeah maybe not worry as much about what we're about to go back to. Going into it I was like oh this is it's just so cute and little and it's amazing how much fits in the small space. There's a little table over here and that I think can be used as a bed too over here. Yeah. Um, and then tiny little bathroom that has a shower in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I was really needing a shower, I would do it, but <laughs> it seemed like a lot of work. <laughs> and then refrigerator, microwave, and then bed. It's kind of a nook, right? Yeah, it's just, co it's cozy. I've always thought it would be fun to get a trailer when I retire someday and just, you know, drive around. It would be fun a great way to see the country. So and after staying in it, do you still feel the same way? Yes, I might want a little bit bigger bathroom. <laughs>
I know it's like a new thing to like do all the vintage stuff and the restoration, so I've never really done anything like this, but this was pretty cool. Oh and this is the shower, so it'd be like... Yeah, we didn't use yeah, the shower. Yeah, we used the community here. showers. And they have, um, they said they have a small, like, water like tank. Like a six-gallon so tank. Of, well, um, it's six gallons. It's six gallons. For hot water. water. Okay. No, we didn't uh, turn the shower on. No, we didn't try that. We got a shower curtain here, though. <laughs> Probably remove the toilet paper. Um. <laughs> it's, like, waterproof. Oh, so yeah, put your clothes in there. It's like a, the kind of bathroom they have on a boat. We had a tent trailer a long time ago and used that all the time and always enjoyed camping and we thought it would be really kind of fun just to find some and vintage ones and see what they cost and whatever. This one is called a, it was an M System Deluxe. It was 1951 M Systems. This company wasn't in business very long, I don't think. So they're really, really rare to get these M Systems. Like the shower in this one, tight fit. So it's tin or it's aluminum all the way around, and it's even curved just like in those streamline. The airstreams, you mean? The airstream, I mean. Wow! And then it just goes all the way down to your drain, and then wow, that's it. Amazing. But look how tall it is. I mean, some of them are so short, but this one is everything is so tall, and then the wood paneling all around. Right. Wow. Everywhere. I love that. That's why we picked this one, was because yeah. we would pay on. But look at this cool detail. I mean, the, the little lights pop on when you open the closet, closets. And then they go off when you close them. The mirror, every, I mean, this one is just one of the cutest ones I thought <laughs> that I saw with the little, the doors on either side and it's very roomy. That's great. This is so, so cute. And look at this cool thing. So here was, they've got closets on either side. They have like a pillow and blankets and stuff in here. So here were, little kids can sleep on it. That doesn't turn into a bed. It's more of a nook. Just it's more of a nook, yeah. yeah. And then this one again opens. But see how the lights then come on? It's automatically. Great. It's very, very clever. Yeah. And then all yeah. these little lights. Up. Things with plugs yeah. in them. Even at that Go time. Go figure, huh? yeah. It's yeah. just unreal how well built these things were. And I mean, you just don't find this. For them to last as long as they did it was amazing. Mom, Viking. It's, it's really beautiful, and I love it because it's very bike friendly. It's very, it's not super expensive, but it's just a great little community. So. And you live in this community. We do, yeah. And you can pay a monthly fee. That's right. Yeah, uh, actually, on the uh, on the other side of this, everything except for these remodeled right. ones, that's all just monthly. They don't have any like nightly rentals. Um, and so. Uh, it's, like five, it's like 500 ish bucks, like 450. Pretty affordable. Uh, yeah, that's with hookups. And especially because this area right now is, is undergoing an incredibly big housing crisis. We've actually been looking because my credit's improved. We couldn't buy a house if we wanted to right now. Even, even with a, a credit that's decent and a VA home loan, there's just no, there's nothing to buy. <laughs> The other thing we've got to fight against now is the stigma because there's still the exact same stigma that the only people who live in trailer parks are people who are there because they can't be trusted enough in society to hold down a regular contract on a regular living apartment. Where like, is mommy going? Mommy's going to the next trailer so that she can clean it, honey bunny. That's definitely still a stigma, for sure. And you can understand why. I mean. There was a time when essentially anybody who could sign their name correctly could get a house, right? And so, in the mind, then, who does that leave in trailer parks? She's coming. She comes. She's coming over, isn't she? But that's not true anymore. It hasn't been true for like 18, 20-ish years now. This place, I've, the most I've ever had is a neighbor once once had their music loud after 10 p.m. One time. There's one thing that you want to specifically think about when you look at these trailers and that is freeways and highways. 
when these trailers were first built, there there weren't freeways. You couldn't just cut right across the landscape of America and just go right through canyons that were specifically designed to save fuel and save miles. Instead, you had to go through the highways, which were built around community. Okay. Go over, tell them hi. Okay. We're hi, trying Nora. to get her to socialize. Okay. Hi, Nora. <laughs> what happened to her tree? Oh, she was in the bike thing the other day, and the bike fell over, and she kind of got her cheek scraped when it fell down. Yeah, that's why she's really scared when I take I'm my hand off the bike. Can I see how you lay in the coffin? Okay. So, you stand up. You have your arms crossed. It's a big thing in the 21st century is to try and redefine what community means in the first place. I'm actually from Spain, Barcelona. Oh, Spain. Gotcha. Okay. So at this point, we're speaking like minions. I think community used to be the people who geographically live close enough that your decisions affected them and their decisions affected you. And that's no longer the case anymore. Multiple things. I mean, the internet plus just the, the general way that we've kind of turned into a global society. He's from Spain, specifically. We're able to opt out and opt into communities that are right next to us, and yet we can opt into communities that are, are global and nationwide. And it's, it's entirely changing what it means to be a part of a community. Okay. It was fantastic to meet you guys. Good to meet you. <laughs> And so, yes, there is a community in some ways. There are some people who've been living here for 20 plus years, and they kind of create this cement, these rocks that everybody else comes around, and then I guess everybody else that just kind of comes in and out uh, over the months is just kind of a sand that builds a concrete over the top of it.